Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today, I want to walk you through all of the audio device preferences inside of Studio One. It's going to be a lot of information and a lot to take in, which is why I'm adding video references to my other tutorials to keep it a bit more concise. And I'm also adding timestamps on the video player so that you can go chapter by chapter and rewatch this at your own pace if you need to. Without any further ado, let's get going. So right off the bat, here on the start page, you see your audio interface where it says setup. You can click on that to, first of all, select your audio interface. That would be the sound card that you're going to use inside of Studio One. And if you're on Mac OS, you can set the playback device. That would be the output, like your speaker output, independently from the recording device. That would be your inputs, such as the microphone and other sources that you might want to record from the real world. If you're on Windows, you're just going to have one device that you set for both your outputs and your inputs. And here in macOS, it's independent from each other. And here you just select your sound card or your audio interface that you're going to use inside of Studio One. In my case, that's going to be the Quantum and Quantum 2626 for both the playback as well as the recording device. And when I click OK and open up a song, like any song, then I get the opportunity to also set my input and output configurations that I can switch on a per song basis. To do that, I can either click on song and song setup, or I can also go back to the start page by clicking on this icon here, click on this interface again, and now I see this song setup button that I didn't see before. And if I click on that, now I can add a mono or a stereo input. So mono inputs would be any kind of um, microphone, for example, that you connect with just one cable to your audio interface, whereas stereo is two connectors for a left and right channel. Um, so for a microphone, I would just add mono and then select whichever port I've connected the microphone to uh, on the quantum interface. If I have a USB mic, of course, I wouldn't do that because that's directly going into my computer. But this would be the same procedure if you want to plug in a guitar and your guitar is uh, plugged into input two, then you would just rename this to guitar or something like that, select input number two, hit apply, and now you'd be able to record this track going forward inside of Studio One. You would just create an audio track with a right click. And then if you open up the track inspector, you can now select your guitar and you're ready to record. If you want to learn more about how to connect your audio interface in Studio One, then check out my dedicated video that walks you through step by step right here, linked in the top corner. Now, if I would start recording right away on this guitar track that I just uh, added, then I would notice a considerable latency. And that is because my device block size here on the start page is currently set to 512 samples. If I click on that, I see how much latency that would result in. And latency means the delay between what you're playing and what you're hearing inside of your software. So that would be quite an issue if you're monitoring with headphones and you're trying to play along with your guitar uh, onto a playback track, everything you play comes in like 11 or if you count it together, 22 milliseconds too late. And that's a considerable delay that you really experience when playing. And to reduce that, what we need to do is reduce the amount of device block size. Now, this comes with a drawback, namely that you give the CPU less time to process the signal traveling into your audio interface and then through the potential effect chain that you're using inside of Studio One and then out to your headphones again, you're giving less time to the system to process all that, which results in higher CPU load. We have a way to bypass that inside of Studio One, and that is called dropout protection. So that's quite unique in Studio One. You're actually able to set a different independent block size for everything that's just playback related and have like a smaller block size for everything that needs to be monitored, listened to in real time as you're playing and recording. So the device block size, that's the one that we're going to use for recording purposes. And that should be as small as it possibly can be without your CPU dropping out. The way to test that is you would just open up a new song, set your device block size to 64 samples. That's usually a really good starting point. And then you add your effects chain, like the effects that you want to hear. For example, on guitar, you'd like Empire or Amplifier Simulation. Uh, you just add that on one single audio track in a new song. And if you can play that with the device block size set to 64 samples, and you find that this delay is acceptable for you during recording, then just leave that there forever, right? That is like your monitoring latency that should always stay the same. And the processing block size that you set in this different tab here, the dropout protection, 
you can set that higher to medium or high or maximum as soon as you add different playback tracks into your song and you find that the CPU load is just getting too much. You just go in and you set dropper protection to low, medium or high. What happens then is that you still have the 64 samples for monitoring, but everything that's playback related gets processed simultaneously at 512 samples or if necessary, even 1024 or even 2048 samples. The way you can set this inside of Studio One is via the mixer console. So if you open up the mixer console, you will see this green Z button here, right there on the main out as soon as the dropper protection is higher than the device block size. And then you can toggle that by clicking here. And what happens now is that all of your playback tracks, meaning tracks that are not monitor armed, like it would be in this case track two to six, they are being processed at a block size of medium, which would be the equivalent of 512 samples. And everything that's monitor armed, in this case, it would be just track one, that's being processed at 64 samples. To untoggle that, you can just click on the screen Z again. The only drawback of Green Z being on is that it might take a little bit longer until the spacebar uh, activates playback in your song and the mixer might look a bit more sluggish, like the metering might look a bit less fluid. But yeah, that's a small drawback, especially because you can just toggle that off with one single click. And you can also activate this behavior for virtual instruments. In this case, you would find this Green Z button right here inside of the virtual instruments rack in your mixer console. So to summarize this whole thing, your device block size you should set in a new song with just one track active with the effects that you traditionally use for monitoring and recording. And if that still sounds all right and doesn't peak at 64 samples, leave that forever at 64 samples. That's usually the sweet spot between no audible delay and not too much stress on your system. And then whenever you need to adjust your block size for playback because there's just too much going on in your song, you just set the dropout protection higher and not the device block size. This is also why here when you click on the performance meter in the transport bar of your song you can directly adjust the dropper protection but not the device block size. That should usually stay the same once it's been set. Okay, so that was already quite a lot. As I said before, please use this video to jump around freely. I'm gonna have timestamps on the video player so that you can go chapter by chapter. Uh, feel free to revisit that at a later point. I know this is a bit much to take in if you're starting from scratch, but if you're ready, let's continue to the other options that you see inside of the device block size and processing block size tab. So first things first would be process precision. You can adjust that in Studio One Professional, double it and give it to next person to 64 bit with 64 bit it could make an audible difference but only when you have a lot of processing going on uh, or with audio where noise and distortion may be more noticeable but in most cases it probably not going to make an audible difference you can toy around with this if you find that it doesn't introduce more cpu load if you set it to 64 bit can't hurt to set it higher okay next up we have plugin nap Plugin Nap is actually an amazing feature that was introduced in the version cycle of 5, Studio One 5, and it pauses plugins on a channel that's not processing any audio for a few seconds, which can save a significant amount of CPU if you have tons of audio tracks that are not playing at the same time, for instance. You can set that on a per plugin basis here in the Plugin Manager. You go to the Home tab here of Studio One's browser and you open up Plugin Manager. Then you see that there's a dedicated Plugin Nap tab if you expand the view of the columns a little bit. You can tick that on and off on a per plugin basis. There might be some plugins that don't react nicely to this, particularly some third party plugins, but then you can just disable that feature for those plugins only and keep using it globally for everything else because it can make a great impact on system load, particularly on older systems. I'm adding a video link in the top corner again, where I go over plugin nap in more detail, if you'd like to find out more about that. Then we have just two more options here. First one is low latency monitoring for instruments. You can only see that when the dropper protection is set higher than the device block size. Right now, they're both set to 64, so you don't see this option, it's grayed out. But as soon as I set this to medium, for instance, and the block size is now higher, then I can toggle this on and off right here or also from the mixer console as I've shown you previously. If you have an interface, an audio interface that supports this function, you can also tick 
native low latency monitoring there would be the blue z mode but this is a feature that's only available for specific interfaces where you basically allow studio one control of the hardware inputs and monitoring of those directly from within studio one so hopefully this video is helpful to you if you struggle to set up your audio interface or if you didn't really get the difference between device block size and process block size which is pretty unique to studio one and if I went a bit too fast, you can always rewatch these videos at your own pace. Thank you for watching. Hope it's helpful.